Hi, I'm Jude Gold from Guitar Player Magazine, and uh, maybe if you just heard those chords, you noticed that the top note was the same in each. What I'm talking about here are what could be described as inverted pedal tones. A pedal tone is usually a note that's on the bottom of every chord, like the low notes that they would play with bass pedals on church organs. Right there, the low E string was the pedal tone. An inverted pedal tone is this one way of describing it, as if we had the note on the top of the chord, which should be something like the same note on the top of each chord. Here in the first five grids of this example, which is from the September uh, 2007 issue of Guitar Player Magazine, quick lick section, nice picture of Herbie Hancock there, which we'll get to in a moment, but this is more of a Joe Beam example, as in one note samba, of course. How could I forget? It's only got one note, right? Well, this kind of parallels the vocal melody, actually, on this song. That's kind of like the, uh, the one note, the one inverted pedal tone that's in each chord. You can almost think of it as a balloon tone. I kind of think of it as this one tone that's hanging off the top of each chord. So that's kind of like a little more of the progression than, than we were able to fit on the page. If you want to check it out, One Note Samba, Antonio Carlos Jobim. But here's the basic chord progression. D minor 7, D flat 7. Again, same note on the top, the pinky. C minor 11. Don't play the fifth string. It's a muted. Then B7 sharp 11 in every chord. And then what I added there was the second part, which might be a F minor 11. Now this top note is going to be in the, the balloon tone in every chord, the inverted pedal tone. Maybe a B add 6, add 13. And then see what it is. There's different ways to do it. That would be a, like I said, a F minor 11. Let's go to a B7. Then to an E flat major 7. And then to an A flat 7. And then we're back to kind of the intro again. Here's another lick in the quick lick section that maybe you'll dig. This one is uh, inspired by a Prince tune called uh, Computer Blue. And he does something really irreverent here, which uh, is why it's called Prince's Irreverent Riffing. The main thing is that it's a, it's a funk groove, a lot of it, in the key of C minor, or at least this example. Kind of like, you know, we're cruising along in that kind of tonality, but all of a sudden he kicks in with a gnarly, almost metal sound with a lot of like maybe delay and room reverb on it. And um, goes from the key of C minor that we are just in and then in the middle of it jumps to the F sharp minor, which makes no sense, but sounds really good. The lick, the little solo break is similar to this, which goes a one, two, three, and. <laughs> You get that kind of a cool sound of the C minor, maybe with a different pickup, and with less grind on there. You get the C minor up to the F sharp minor, literally jumping up a tritone. And he's doing that. The lick is actually uh, written out with all alternate picking here. For some reason, I like the way it sounds to hammer on the second note. So it's a fun little lick. It's basically pentatonic position. 
C minor, eighth position. That kind of a position, starting on the major third, which is why we start on the second finger. And there we've jumped up to the 14th position, which is the F sharp minor. Cool kind of an 80s rock break that just pops in out of nowhere. And uh, maybe a lot of chromaticism in there too. That's kind of out of the chromatic scale. And it just kind of works, even though there's no reason for it. So it's kind of inspiring in that, in that regard, in that, you know, sometimes you just gotta try something that makes no sense and it just livens up the entire song. Came out of nowhere, but wow, kind of a cool bonus breakdown. A lot of people think that um, Joe Satriani's first record was Surfing with the Alien. Um, other fans who maybe know his stuff a little better might think that uh, Not of This Earth, which was his uh, first real CD, was his first release. But his first release was actually an album that he apparently financed with a credit card and came out on vinyl back in the stone ages of the early 80s. <laughs> and I forget the exact year, not sure, I guess uh, 1984. And there's a cool little harmonic kind of a etude that he did on there where he mixed fretted notes with harmonics. And it went something like this. <laughs> Pretty easy to play. On the sixth string, you have these two notes, C and D, eighth fret, tenth fret. In between those two notes, you're gonna be throwing in a lot of the twelfth fret harmonics on the fourth, third, and second strings. Except for you probably pluck them, if you're holding a pick, if you're holding a pick, you would probably pluck them with the, your third, fourth, and your second, third, and fourth fingers even though most people don't use their pinky that much. In this case, it's not that hard. It's kind of a stretcher if you want to get the overlap. So you're holding this note, and then you're overlapping these harmonics on top. That means, of course, that this finger has to be arched enough that you're not touching the strings. If you do that, then you're not going to get any sound out of the harmonics. So you got to, that finger's got to be catching some air above the strings. Similarly, you jump to the 10th fret with the third finger. Another kind of a stretch, not too bad. This finger catching air over the strings so that when you pluck those same three strings at the 7th fret harmonics, again, the 4th, 3rd, and 2nd strings, they ring and they, they don't get muted by this finger. So you got... number of rhythms you could play with it. It's a cool kind of a sound. I think there's another part on that song that we're mostly focused on these two harmonics. That's the third string and the fourth string at the twelfth fret. And then occasionally the second string. I think it went something like this. <laughs> 